Okay, you ready? Oliver was walking near the river in the evening when a group of people dressed in black caught him. All of them were wearing masks. Their leader offered Oliver three options. They could throw the guy into the sea with hungry piranhas. He could choose to end up in the ocean swarming with sharks. Or he could opt for a river with hippos. What should Oliver choose to survive? Piranhas only live in freshwater. The guy should pick the sea with the piranhas. An expedition set up camp in the middle of a desert. They were planning to spend several days in that place. But when they woke up, their truck had disappeared. Luckily, they had enough food to last a week, but no power and little water. But there was more to come. Three days later, one of the team members disappeared. The leader of the expedition questioned the remaining people. Michael said he had been wandering around, trying to find water. Emily said she had been playing games on her smartphone. Evelyn claimed they had been sleeping all day long to save energy. And Henry said he had been preparing his research paper in his tent. Now, who's lying? Emily. In three days, her phone would have already run out of battery. There are 100 books on a shelf. To count off 10 of them, you'll need 10 seconds. How much time you'll spend counting off 70 books? It will take you 30 seconds. You'll need this time to count off 30 books, and the remaining ones will add up to 70. Sophia's sister, Chloe, visited her on Saturday. The women had a meal and talked about their lives. Chloe had been promoted. Her husband had recently presented her a diamond ring, and they were going to have a vacation in Hawaii. Chloe didn't have such amazing news. She only listened to her sister and complained about life. Right after lunch, Chloe felt unwell. She paled and lost consciousness. Sophia called an ambulance. They rushed Chloe to a hospital and hardly had enough time to save her life. It turned out the woman had been poisoned. The police came to Sophia to ask her a couple of questions. She was shocked. We ate the same food. I cooked chicken and made a vegetable salad. Nothing exotic. After examining the food, the police officers arrested Sophia for trying to poison her sister. But how did she do it? The poison was in the bottle with the salad dressing. Chloe added some vinaigrette to her dish, while Sophia didn't touch the bottle. The moral? Stop complaining so much. A small cafe in Boston is called Nine Lanterns, but there are only seven lanterns hanging outside. The owner knows about this mistake and can easily correct it, but he doesn't. Why? When the wind took away two lanterns some time ago, the man wanted to replace them. But before he could do it, he noticed that more people started to come into his cafe. They told him two lanterns were missing, and then stayed to drink coffee. Jackson came to visit his friend Aiden, who he hadn't seen in ages. They had a great time, gossiping and drinking tea. But Jackson had completely forgotten Aiden had one quirk. He loved making up riddles and never let anyone leave his house without cracking one or two of his newest ones. This time, his question was, what do you swallow that can swallow you? Can you help Jackson get home? Hey, it's already late. The answer is water. Jackson was smart enough to know he won't be able to leave Aiden's house after just one riddle. True to his expectations, another riddle was waiting for him. What is lower with a head on top than without it? Jackson took his sweet time, but eventually he realized the right answer was a pillow. 
could he go home now? Apparently not yet, but Aiden promised it would be the last riddle for the evening. He told his friend, Hannah's birthday is on January 23rd, but she always celebrates it in the summer. Why? Luckily, Jackson had just returned from his trip to Australia. He immediately realized that Hannah lived in the Southern Hemisphere. There, January is the hottest month of the year. Students knew they would have an exam on Friday, but their strict professor didn't tell them the exact time. When one guy gathered enough courage to ask about it, he got a weird reply. If 11 plus 2 equals 1, 10 plus 6 equals 4. If you manage to figure out the answer, you won't miss the exam. Do you know when the students should meet with their professor? At 4 p.m. 11 o'clock plus 2 hours is 1 p.m. Then 10 o'clock and 6 hours is 4 p.m. James called his wife Mia and told her he would be at home by 8 o'clock. They didn't plan anything special for that evening. But when he arrived at 2 minutes past 8, the woman was furious. Why was she so angry? Mia thought her husband would come home by 8 p.m., but he appeared at 8.02 a.m. the next morning. Uh Uh-oh. Look at these two ladies. They both seem to be filthy rich, but only one of them actually is. Can you figure out who's fake rich? It's the girl on the left. She's taking a photo with a luxury car in the background. But there's someone in the driver's seat, and this person looks rather shocked. One elderly man could only use a public telephone to make his calls. Once the phone stopped working, the man informed the phone company. He waited and waited, but no one came to fix the phone. Several days later, the man visited the company again and said something. The day after, the phone was working again. What did the man say? He said people use the phone to make calls without paying. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong with it? The pitcher the woman is holding is empty. Then where's the milk coming from? Mark has always been jealous of his friend Liam's achievements. This week, they're both taking part in a battle of wits. Mark decides to do everything possible to win this time. And the first task is to guess the word. It has seven letters, and it is very heavy. But if Mark takes away two letters, he'll get eight. If he takes away one letter, he'll get 80. What word is it? The first riddle is a success. Mark finds the right word. It's weighty. The next question is even trickier. A man went around the world in a ship, and still, he was always inside of land. How is it possible? It doesn't take Mark long to figure out the man was in a spaceship orbiting Earth. The next thing Mark knows, he's locked in a room. Wow. There are four doors there. He's entered through one of them, and he can't use it again. The first door leads to the room with high-voltage wires hanging above the wet floor. Behind the second door, there's a water-filled room swarming with piranhas. And the third door hides a room where acid, flesh-melting rain is falling from the ceiling. Which door is more or less safe to enter?
Mark opted for the first door and didn't regret it. It was safe because he didn't let his body come into contact with the wires and the wet floor at the same time. It turned out the next task was the last one in this competition. Mark was looking forward to finding out the winner, but first he had to do some brain work. The world's tallest tower is finally finished. It took five years to build it. Every next year, the construction doubled in height. How many years did it take the tower to reach half its current height? Four years. If the tower grew twice taller every year, it had to be half of its final height a year before it was completed. And if you're wondering about the results of the competition, it ended in a tie. Duh. Luna has two friends, Jack and Owen. On her birthday, the girl wants to go to the movies with the guys. But they don't know each other, and Luna's worried they might feel uncomfortable. But there's also another problem. She spent way too much money this month. But if she invites the guys, she's going to pay. Now, she's trying to understand what is cheaper to invite both guys at the same time or go to the movies with each of them in turn. Can you help Luna? It'll cost the girl less to invite her two friends at the same time. This way, she'll only have to buy three tickets. If she goes with each of them, she'll pay for four tickets. It was a sunny summer day without a single cloud in the sky. The ship was in the harbor. There were many people on the shore. They gathered there to look at the vessel. Suddenly, the ship started to sink. There was nothing wrong with it, and all of its systems were functioning correctly. The weather was fine, and the sea was calm. But the ship still disappeared in the blink of an eye. What happened? Well, nothing unexpected. Submarines are supposed to travel underwater. The royal family of Ravania were going to visit the city during their world trip. And, of course, they were all bringing their precious crowns with them. They asked the mayor of the city to take special precautions. Thank you. So, he placed the crowns in a safe in a hidden room in his office, guarded by a couple of security officers. <laughs> However, the next morning, when the mayor came to check on the crowns to report to the royal family that they were safe, he started panicking. Can you guess why? It's because the crowns inside the safe are not the real ones. The first crown has a price tag on it. The second crown is broken. And one of the gemstones on the third crown is missing. Oh no! That wouldn't happen if it was the real thing. The mayor wanted to make sure that whoever had stolen the crowns was caught. He also hoped the police would find them before the media learned about what had happened. And the only person who could help him was Detective Zelda. So, he immediately called her. The detective arrived at his office and inspected the secret room. She noticed something that might help her with her investigation. Can you figure out what it is? There's a piece of paper under one of the fake crowns. The thief left a note. Detective Zelda read it. Hmm. Dear Maya, I'm very disappointed in you. This accident has proved how inept you are at providing comfort and security for your guests, as well as your citizens. I believe I can be convinced to give the crowns back if you pay me a large, and I mean it, sum of money. Mark my words and count on what I say in my letter on this matter. Here is my contact number. 19.1-1.3-1999 and 13.3-1.2-6.3-9.1. Yours truly, the riddling man. What can you make of this number? Well, the mayor thought it was a phone number. 
he immediately took his phone and dialed the number. But just as Detective Zelda suspected, no one answered. In one of the last sentences of his letter, the riddling man underlined mark, words, count, and letter. That must be a hint. The number before the dot indicates which word you should look for in the note, and the number after the dot tells you which letter you need in that word. For example, 19.1 means you need to find the 19th word, which is comfort. The letter you need is the first one, which is C. When you do that for every number, you'll get Cafe West. Before Detective Zelda left for the cafe, she decided to check the security camera footage recorded at night. The mayor took her to the surveillance room. There were three different monitors, each showing the room from different angles. Detective Zelda realized only one of them was still recording live. Hmm. The other two were showing fake images. Which recording is real and why? Do you remember what the room looked like when Detective Zelda was inspecting it? The clock certainly wasn't on this wall. It was on the opposite one, so the footage on the first monitor is fake. The footage on the second monitor isn't real also. If you look closer, you'll see a moth flying around the room, but it repeats the same movement over and over again. That's badly edited fake footage, so it makes the footage from the third monitor the real one. Oh yes. Detective Zelda rewound the footage and found the moment when the riddling man had broken into the room. He was covering his face, so it was impossible to tell what he looked like. Still, Detective Zelda managed to notice something that could help her find the criminal. Can you tell what it is? If you look at the lower left corner, you'll see someone walk into the room and leave it quickly while the riddling man is stealing the crowns. Hmm. Could that mean that the riddling man has a partner? Hmm. To find that out, Detective Zelda questioned all the security guards who had been working the night shift. The first guard, George, said that he'd been keeping watch in front of the door. The only time he left his place was when he took a short bathroom break. The second guard, Joe, said he'd been standing in front of the door to the mayor's office all night and the only person who took a break was George. Hmm. The third guard, Brian, said he'd been right there by the door as well. Hmm. Hmm. Detective Zelda knew only one of them was telling the truth and the other two were lying. Who is the liar? Do you remember what the shoes of the man who entered the room looked like? White sneakers, and that's what Brian is wearing. So he's lying. And since Joe didn't mention that Brian had left his place, he's a liar too. George is the only one who's telling the truth. Ciao. Brian and Joe immediately started begging Zelda. We can't end up in jail. We promised we didn't steal anything. You have to believe us, Detective Zelda asked. Then why did you lie? They said that they had heard some noise coming from the room while George was away. They decided that Brian would check the room and Joe would keep watch. When Brian saw someone in the room, he got scared and ran out of there. He told Joe that he would rather lose his job than have something bad happen to him. As for Joe, he lied because Brian was his best friend and he didn't want him to get fired. And since they never saw anyone enter or exit the room, they thought they were imagining things. After all, they were very tired. What do you think Zelda can do to check if the guards are telling the truth? She can check the surveillance footage of the street outside the building to confirm that nobody entered or left. When Zelda couldn't see anyone even walk across the street, she came to the conclusion that Brian and Joe were telling the truth. Yeah. The detective decided to check the secret room once again to figure out how the riddling man had gotten inside. Sometime later, she managed to spot another hidden door. Can you see it too?
The bookcase is actually a door. Oh my god. She examined the door to figure out how to open it. She noticed three buttons, but only one could open the door. If Zelda pressed the wrong button, the door would get locked for good, and she would not be able to figure out where it led. Which button should she press? Take a look at the books next to the buttons. One of the titles is meaningless, while the others make sense. That must be an anagram, a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of another. When you rearrange the letters in the title, you'll get the second button. Mm. Detective Zelda pressed it, and the bookcase door opened. The woman saw a narrow hallway with stairs leading down. She took a step, and the door closed behind her back. She tried to force it open, but it wouldn't move. The only thing she could do was go down the stairs. She ended up in an underground pit. Inside, there was nothing but a shovel and a sign that showed her that she was around the pit. In the hole to the left, there were venomous snakes. The pit on the right was filled with poisonous gas. And on the ground right above her head, there was an angry dog with sharp teeth. What should she do? She should dig upwards. She needs to listen to the sounds the dog makes and wait for the animal to fall asleep. Then she should walk quietly past it. That must be how the riddling man entered and left the room. Detective Zelda didn't want to waste any more time, so she headed to Cafe West. A guy sitting at the table in the corner caught her eye. He looked suspicious. When Detective Zelda started walking towards him, he quickly wrote something on the newspaper he'd been reading. Then, he ran away through the back door. Detective Zelda tried to catch him, but failed. She checked the paper and found another note. It said, You're not the mayor, but I'll give him one last chance. It looks like you work for him, so bring me $20 million in cash. We can meet at the building that has the most stories in two hours. What building does the riddling man mean? The library. Of course, Detective Zelda was not going to give him any money. She took an empty bag to trick him into believing she had the cash so that he wouldn't run away. She went to the library. When she entered, she saw the riddling man wearing the same sunglasses and coat. He was waiting for her in the riddle and puzzle books section. Then, suddenly, someone accidentally pushed the woman. She dropped her bag. It fell on the floor and opened. The riddling man saw it was empty and understood that this was just a plan to catch him. He ran away. But he dropped something while escaping. It was a library book, and there was a library card inside. It had three different addresses of three different people who had borrowed the book before. Zelda immediately realized which was the riddling man's address. How did she figure it out? Remember the note the riddling man wrote to her at the cafe? The first address is written by the same person. Detective Zelda had two police officers break into the riddling man's apartment. They found the crowns, but the criminal was gone. For some reason, Detective Zelda felt that she would see the riddling man again. Detective Tina received an emergency call from the local museum. Someone had stolen an exclusive scarab brooch from ancient Egypt. First of all, Tina checked all security cameras. This is what she found. Can you spot the thief just by looking at these two pictures? See this guy? He's holding an open paper cup in the first image. But in the second image, the cup has a lid. The guy hid the stolen brooch in his paper cup. Detective Tina hurried to the crime scene. When the brooch disappeared, the museum security system locked all visitors inside the building. But the guards didn't find the suspected person among the visitors. How did he escape? Have you guessed? Take a look up at the ceiling. See the shoe prints on the statue? 
The thief climbed the sculpture and escaped through the window on the roof. Tina went to the roof to search for some clues. Can you see any? The thief left the cup on the roof. There's a coffee shop name written on it. Bright Cup. Tina can visit this place and check the security cameras. Tina arrived at the coffee shop, located just nearby the museum. Unfortunately, they didn't have security cameras, so Tina questioned the staff. Kelly, the barista, said, Sorry, I don't know this guy. I'm just trying to do my job. Mike, the manager, said, This face looks familiar, but I'm not sure where I saw him. And Phil, the guard, said, Sorry, never saw him. You can trust me. I have a perfect memory for faces. Tina knew for sure that one of them had lied. Can you spot who exactly? Kelly, look at her iPad. There's an incoming call from her boyfriend. Take a closer look at the contact photo. It's our thief. Therefore, Kelly is an accomplice in the crime. Tina told Kelly, I'm afraid we should continue this conversation at the police station. But Kelly ran away through the backyard. Tina followed her and ended up in a dark basement. She got lost and found these three cages. The first cage is covered with fire. There are huge ice cubes all over the second cage. And the third cage is full of venomous scorpions. Tina has to choose one of them to get to the surface. Can you help her choose the safest option? The cage with the ice cubes. She can get cold, but it's still safer than the other two cages. The police caught Kelly and brought her to the station. During interrogation, Kelly told Tina four facts. First of all, this guy's name is Alex. Secondly, he's my ex-boyfriend. We don't get along anymore. We went to the same college and met in history class. And finally, I don't know why he'd stolen this stupid brooch. One of the facts is false. Can you guess which one? The fourth one. Look at Kelly's tattoo. It's identical to the stolen brooch. She definitely knows something about the stolen item. Kelly confessed that the thief might be hiding in an abandoned castle site outside the city. Tina went to check it out. But anyone who wants to reach the castle should go through this tangled maze. Can you tell which one of these four paths will bring Tina to the castle? The first path leads to the pond with crocodiles. The third one leads nowhere. And the fourth way goes back to the beginning. So Tina should choose the second path. Tina entered the castle and saw a room full of ancient artifacts. She spotted the thief right away. What about you? Can you see him? This mummy is holding a cell phone. Alex ran away to the basement and Tina followed him. Unfortunately, the door behind her slammed shut and she got stuck. Can you help her break the code to escape? A calendar on the door says, you force heaven to be empty. If you read the sentence again, you're going to hear a seven-digit code. U, four, seven, two, B, M, T. In the next room, Tina got stuck in another trap. The creepy voice explained, If you press the right button, I'm going to let you go. But if you choose the wrong one, you'll stay here forever. You've only got one chance to escape. Good luck. Which button opens the lock? Have you guessed? She should pick the black button. This picture on the wall is a hint. The rainbow contains all colors except for black. 
Tina got out of the trap and entered a room full of old furniture. She noticed three odd details about this room right away. What about you? There are books in this burning fireplace, but they don't burn. Take a look at this painting on the wall. This lady's winking. And the reflection in this mirror doesn't match the room at all. Tina found Alex near these underground gates leading to an ancient underground city. He explained that the scarab brooch hid a secret key, but there are four different locks on the gates. The guys only have one attempt to choose the right one. Which lock should they pick? The fourth lock is the only perfect match for this key. The guys opened the gates and entered the city. Alex had a map, so he ran away to find the treasures and left Tina alone. She looked around and noticed a three-way road pointing to the north, west, and east. Tina didn't know where to go. Suddenly, she saw a lady. The local citizens always reply truthfully, but they answer only one question if they're talking to a stranger. What should Tina ask to figure out the right direction? She should ask, if the right direction is not the east, is it west? Here's why. There are three possible answers. One, yes, west is correct. Two, no, east is the right direction. Three, neither one nor the other. Tina should go north. Or, Tina might just ask the name of this lady and then introduce herself. This way, they won't be strangers anymore, and Tina would be able to ask as many questions as she needed. Tina went north and finally found the entrance to a cave with treasures, but the door has a combination lock. Can you help Tina figure out the code? Take a look at these figures. The number corresponds to the sum of intersection points. Therefore, she needs to calculate the number of points in the last figure. And voila! The four-digit code is solved. Inside the caves, Tina met a dragon. It said, I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm quite hot, but if you remove the first two letters, I become too cold. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is spice. When we take away the first two letters, it turns into ice. To find the treasures, Tina has to walk through this round maze. She only has 10 seconds to choose the correct way. Can you help her out? Here's the easiest way. Tina found three doors in the center of the labyrinth. Each door leads to treasures. But each way also hides some danger. The first path is filled with poisonous gas. There are thousands of toads and bugs behind the second door. They crawl all over the floor and walls. And a hungry lion is hiding behind the third door. Which way should Tina choose? The second way, although bugs and toads can be gross, they're not dangerous. Tina took the treasures and headed home. Suddenly, she met Alex. Tina decided to trick him and offered him a deal. If you manage to solve my puzzle, I'm going to give you 100% of the treasures. But if you fail, you'll get nothing and go to jail. Here's the riddle. Move just one match to point this giraffe in a different direction. Alex failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. Pretty easy, huh? Brad has recently downloaded a dating app and found three beautiful ladies right away. Fiona is an art dealer from San Francisco. 
She has never had a serious relationship before, but she would like to settle down. Mary is a vegan, yoga teacher, and human rights enthusiast. She loves French cheese and enjoys watching sunsets on the pier. Betty is a firefighter. In her spare time, she writes songs and performs them with her music band. Brad likes them all equally. Can you give him advice on who he should invite on a real offline date? Look at this wedding picture in Fiona's profile. She's the bride, but she claimed she had never been married. Mary is also a liar. Vegans don't eat cheese, so Brad should text Betty. As soon as Betty received a text from Brad, she ran to the bathroom to get ready for the date. She got her hair done and took out several lipsticks. Betty is a tomboy, which is why she uses makeup very rarely. Can you help her choose the right lipstick for her date? This lipstick is way too old. Look at the date. It was made in 1999 and expired a long time ago. And there's a spider inside this lipstick. Betty should choose the second one. Meanwhile, Brad took a shower and prepared to put on his favorite white shirt. But when he pulled it out of the closet, he discovered that someone had stained it with chocolate. Brad questioned his three brothers. Jim said he'd been cooking dinner in the kitchen. He didn't even come into Brad's room that day. Bill said that he entered Brad's room about an hour before to borrow a charger for his phone. And Mike said he'd been partying with his girlfriend all day and had just returned home. Who is lying? Bill, if he borrowed a charger one hour ago, why is his phone still at 1%? Brad decided to prank his brother Bill and cut two holes in his t-shirt. How many holes does the t-shirt have now? Eight. These two holes are cut through the t-shirt. That makes four holes in total. Plus, there are two holes for the arms, one for the head, and one at the bottom of the t-shirt. Betty and Brad met in a restaurant. It was love at first sight. A waiter came over and said, Good evening. What would you like to eat? Betty answered, I'd like something that is red, but it can be green at times, and sometimes it's yellow. The waiter cracked her riddle immediately and brought her the food she'd ordered. What was it? An apple. Brad liked the game and offered the waiter one more riddle. It can be red and it can be green. It can be black or it can be white. It tastes delicious with other dishes, but not on its own. In a minute, the waiter brought Brad his order. Have you guessed what it was? Pepper. After dinner, Brad and Betty went for a walk in the park. They were so focused on each other that they got completely lost. They began looking for a way out and came to this weird crossroad. There were four different roads. Each road had a sign, but the signs had no words. Still, Brad and Betty knew which path to take. What about you? This one. It's the only right hand. Five months later, Betty moved in with Brad. They shared a family house with Brad's three brothers. One day, Betty got a new longboard as a gift for Brad's birthday. It was a surprise, so she locked it in a basement and went to buy some groceries for dinner. When she returned, the longboard wasn't there. She realized that one of the four brothers must have pulled a prank on her. Brad said he hadn't seen anything. Jim said he'd noticed the longboard while walking past the basement, but he'd been in a hurry to get to his training. Mike said he had spent the day downstairs baking cookies for his scientific club. And Bill said he'd been on a business trip. Who is behind the mysterious disappearance? Jim, Betty locked the room. It means he couldn't see the longboard unless he broke in. Brad's brothers came home after work and met Brad in the kitchen. 
The guy was anxious because Betty was missing. The brothers asked him to tell them everything in detail. Brad said, well, she made me a birthday cake with ice cream this morning. I wanted to try it, but she said we'd eat it in the evening. We argued a bit. Then I went to work. When I got back, she was gone. As soon as the brothers heard Brad's story, they called him a liar. Why? He said Betty had made the cake in the morning. Then why hasn't the ice cream melted yet? Brad got a job as a chemistry teacher. Wait, who stole his money? Brad found only one person's fingerprints on the wallet, his own. He questioned his three colleagues. Math teacher Jennifer said that she'd been having lunch. History teacher Becky said, I didn't feel well yesterday, so I went home early. And English teacher Sam said that he'd been checking his students' homework in his classroom. Who is the thief? The history teacher. She used gloves to steal the money and then threw them in the trash. Betty and Brad were walking down the street. Suddenly, they met a weird-looking guy. He introduced himself as a magician and asked, Do you guys want to get rich? Crack this three-digit code, and the money is yours. He gave them a heavy suitcase with a combination lock and a piece of paper with this riddle. A. 548. In the first line, one number is correct and well-placed. B. 530. In the second line, nothing is correct. C. 157. In the third line, two numbers are correct but in the wrong places. D. 806. In the fourth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. E. 647. And in the fifth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys? You can use different approaches to crack this riddle. The easiest one is to start with statement B. None of these digits are correct. Therefore, we can exclude numbers 5, 3, and 0. In statement C, we're told that two numbers are correct, but in the wrong places. We can conclude that numbers 1 and 7 are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Now let's take a look at statements D and E. In both of them, one number is correct, but in the wrong place. We already know that 7 is in the code. It means the remaining digit can't be 6. Then, it must be 8. Look again at statement A. Since the correct number is 8, it must also be correctly placed. In statement C, we have two correct numbers, but they're in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by 8, we can only have one option. 7 should go first, and 1 should be second. Then the correct code is 718. Brad and Betty open the suitcase. It had $50 million inside. They quit their jobs and went on vacation right away. They checked into a fancy hotel and went to their room to get some rest after a long, exhausting flight. In the evening, they went downstairs to have dinner in a cute Chinese restaurant. But one of the guests is not human. Can you spot who it is? Take a closer look at this guy's plate. It doesn't look like human food at all. When Betty and Brad returned to their room after the meal, they discovered that all their money and gadgets were gone. Oh, no. The hotel security manager asked three guests the same question. What were you doing within the last two hours? Dan said that he had spent all evening in the swimming pool area. Courtney said she'd been chilling in her room with her besties and had nothing to do with the robbery. And Henry said he had just returned from a party in another part of the city. Who's the thief? Courtney, the security manager, didn't mention any robbery, but she started making excuses straight away. Brad decided to jump with a parachute, but he landed not as successfully as he had expected. As soon as Betty found out about the accident, she rushed to the hospital. In the room, she saw an unconscious person, completely in bandages. She asked a doctor who was passing by, Sir, please let me in. It's my boyfriend. But the doctor told her that the patient was a woman. Who is right? It's a man. Look at the name tag on his bed. 
Brad got well pretty quickly, and Becky took him on a romantic trip to an ancient castle. They were walking around the place and taking pictures, but suddenly, all the doors slammed shut. The guys were trapped inside. Brad found a door with a four-digit combination lock, and Betty found this piece of paper on the floor. Can you help the guys crack the code and escape? The correct code is STOP. Take the first letter of September, the sixth letter of August, the first letter of October, and the second letter of April, and you'll get the word STOP. Lucas and Hudson are walking. Which one of them isn't very smart? It's Hudson. He's staring at the screen of his phone and can miss that cliff and fall over. Even though Lucas is blind, he still has his stick. With its help, he'll know about the edge of the cliff as soon as he reaches it. He's safe. Opal is spending a vacation climbing the mountains. Karis is climbing Everest. Can you tell which one of them isn't smart? It's Opal. Look, she's forgotten about the safety rope and is climbing without it. Not good. Gabriel and Archer are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Gabriel is taking a selfie while surfing a huge wave. And Archer has chosen to take one while standing on the edge of the bridge above the lake. Who is not being careful? It's Gabriel. They're both doing very risky things, but at least Archer has some people around who can help him if something happens. Gabriel is alone in the ocean. It's a very early morning after a party. Egan and Bradley are driving their children to college. Can you tell who's not smart? Egan. His son isn't even in the car. Delilah and Ellery are on vacation. Both of them decided to learn something new. Delilah is skiing in the forest, and Ellery is practicing skating on the lake. Who is in danger? It's Ellery. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. She should get out of there as fast as possible. Ariana and Eliza are getting ready for a barbecue party they're hosting. Ariana is making salads outside, and Eliza is decorating the house and the garden. Who's not being smart? It's Ariana. While she's busy with the salads, the meat is going bad in the sun. Karis, a mother of four, returned home and saw that all the teenagers were quietly doing their own stuff. The oldest one, Amanda, was playing Uno, Gabriella was reading, Haven was painting. What was Ainsley doing? Ainsley was playing Uno with Amanda. Take a look at these guys and tell who is behaving stupidly. All the guys on the left, they will all fall in the end. The only guy who will stay on the tree is the one on the right. Detective Callum was spending his holiday in Hawaii. He was having his evening coffee on the terrace when he heard some noise and a scream. The balcony door of the room next to his was open, so he walked in and asked what had happened. A young actress, Chanel, was staying there. She said some man dressed in black and wearing a mask broke into her room and tried to take her away. She screamed, and the criminal ran away, disappearing in the hallway. The actress asked Detective Callum to find the man immediately. But the detective said Chanel could try to fool someone else, and he'd rather return to his coffee. Why didn't he believe the girl? Look at the door of the actress's room. Lots of boxes are blocking it. If the man had indeed run out of the door, he
he'd have pushed all the stuff out of his way. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to open it. The girl just tried to make up some drama to get media attention. Adam came to his PE class and told the teacher that, unfortunately, he couldn't work out. He broke his arm the other day. But Adam had a bad reputation. The teacher didn't believe him and told the guy to stop fooling around. Do you believe Adam? Look, he has a cast on his arm, but it's placed over his jacket. It must be fake. Mrs. Miller reported that someone in the neighborhood had run up to her and stolen her bag. The authorities interrogated all the neighbors. Bryce said he had been away. I came home less than a minute ago. Arden said she'd spent all day at home and hadn't been outside. Easton said he had taken his dog for a walk, but he didn't steal anything or see anything strange. The authorities arrested one person. Who? They arrested Bryce. He said he'd just come home. But the water in the pot on the stove is boiling. He must have been at home for a while already. Ames worked in a clock store. One day, he called the police. When they arrived, Ames told them he had been working when the electricity suddenly went off. He tried to solve the problem by himself first. Then he called the police. They soon figured out what had happened, and the lights were on again. Ames immediately checked the cash desk. Apparently, while the lights were off, someone broke into the store and stole all the money. But the police didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? In the store, there were mechanical and electric clocks. But the difference between the time they display is just 10 minutes. Mechanical clocks don't stop when the electricity is off. It means that the lights were off only for about 10 minutes. Ames must have switched the electricity off by himself and then called the police. Nelson was a writer. He was always disturbed by teenagers gathering outside his house and couldn't focus. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, he said someone had thrown a stone at his office window. He asked the police to officially prohibit the teenagers from coming anywhere close to his house. But the detective didn't believe him. Why? Look, the glass is broken at the bottom, but this part of the window is protected by the balcony outside. Nelson must have broken the window himself to accuse the teenagers. A family was on vacation, and they had no idea what day it was. Dad said, "Eh, I'm pretty sure it's either Monday or Tuesday. Mom added, All I know is that it wasn't Wednesday yesterday. Jake said, It must be Wednesday, or the weekend. Sienna was in doubt. Maybe it's Friday. Ruby said, Friday is tomorrow. Can you tell what day it is if only one statement is true? According to Dad, it's Monday or Tuesday. According to Mom, it's any day other than Thursday. So it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Jake is sure it's Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sienna claims it's Friday, and according to Ruby, it's Thursday. The only day that is mentioned only once is Thursday. It means Ruby is right. Paige and Quinley were sisters. They were hanging out together in their room. Quinley had a crush on a guy from her school. She decided to write him a letter. Paige thought it was a bad idea, but Quinley wouldn't listen to her. Once she was almost done, Quinley went downstairs to get some tea. When she returned, the letter was gone. Paige said that a gust of wind suddenly blew in and the letter flew out of the window. But Quinley didn't believe her and asked Paige to give her the letter back. How did she figure out her sister had taken the letter? When the wind blows inside a room from the outside, nothing can possibly fly out of the window. Colton got into an accident and had memory loss. Kennedy and Isla both claimed to be his girlfriend. They took the guy to the place where they had their first date. 
each of the girls hoped Colton would decide she was his real girlfriend. Have you figured out who the guy dated? Look, there are initials painted on the tree, saying C plus I. It means Colton's girlfriend is Isla. In a hotel, someone robbed a rich gentleman. The only witness was Joseph, a cleaning man working in the hotel. He was tidying a room nearby at the time of the robbery. The detective asked the man if he had seen anything. Joseph said, When I heard the noise, I was going to enter the room. But then the door opened and hit me on the head. I couldn't see for a while. Joseph even showed the police officer a bruise on his forehead. The detective didn't believe Joseph, though, and arrested him for assisting the robber. Why? The door couldn't hit Joseph because it opens inwards, so he lied. After an accident, Karis was staying in the hospital. Only relatives were allowed to visit her. But three guys wanted to see the girl, her boyfriend, a classmate who was in love with her, and her brother. Each of them said he was her brother. Take a look at the guy's identity cards and try to figure out who her brother is. Her brother must be Philip. The age difference between Karis and Colton is 4 months, and between Karis and Nero, 5. Such an age gap is too small for them to be siblings. Maddox came to the police station to report his cousin, Damon. The guy asked Maddox if he could stay with him for a couple of days. In the evening, Damon asked the host to bring him some fruit from the basement. When Maddox went there, Damon locked him inside. There was no electricity and no light in the basement. And Maddox didn't have a single gadget with him that could help him out. Two days later, at 4 a.m., he heard his cousin drive away. It was only later that day that he managed to get out thanks to a postman. Maddox found out that all his money had been stolen. But the police officers didn't believe him. Why? Maddox said he hadn't had any gadgets to check the time. It was also too dark to see anything on a regular clock then how could he figure out when exactly his cousin drove away? Hmm.